Hi all, I am Vinay Kumar. In this series of Armcotics M4, today I will explain you what is stack memory. Okay. In our future videos, I will explain you how to implement a task scheduler. For that, first you should know what is stack memory and how to program a stack memory. Because without knowing stack memory and uh, implementing stack memory, we can't do task scheduling. Uh, okay. That's why in this video, I will explain you what is stack memory and how to access a stack memory, what are the different models of stack memory, which model we are using in Cortex M4. And in next video, I will explain you um, what is MSP, PSP. These are stack pointers. Here see, a stack memory is a part of main memory, that is nothing but internal RAM or external RAM, reserved for temporary storage of data. You know, in ARM Cortex M4, uh, there is only SRAM, SRAM of 512 MB, okay, SRAM of 512 MB. This 512 MB is used for storing the data, okay. In this 512 MB, one particular portion is dedicated for this stack memory, okay. This one particular portion is dedicated for stack memory for storing the temporary data. Here see, the mainly used during function, interrupt, exception handling. Whenever uh, you are executing functions, multiple functions or whenever you are executing interrupts, Whenever you are executing uh, exception, then uh, you need this stack memory for storing the temporary data. For example, there are consider there are two functions in C program that is function one and function two. Okay, suppose you are executing the function one at middle, you called function two from function one. Then our control jumps from function one to function two. Here, see before going. Uh, before jumping from function 1 to function 2, our control should store all the function 1 related local variables into the stack memory. Because whenever you jump from function 1 to function 2, at one point after executing the function 2, you should come back to function 1. Okay, you should come back to function 1. Uh, if you come back to function 1, then you should need what are the variables present in the function 1? That's why you need to store the variables present in the function 1 in stack memory before jumping to the function 2. In this case, we use stack memory and in the interrupts exception also, we use stack memory. In our previous videos, I will explain you what is interrupt and exception and what are the types of interrupts and exceptions present in ARM Cortex also. There we will uh, discuss about this clear. Okay. Here see, stack memory is accessed in last in passed out fashion, which is nothing but whatever the elements you store it at the last, you can uh, read that element first, okay, that is nothing but last in passed out fashion. Here see, the stack can be accessed using push and pop instruction or using any memory manipulation instruction that is load and store. If you want to, if you want to store any element into the stack, then you have to use push operation. If you want to uh, remove any element from the stack or delete any element from the stack, then you have to use this pop instruction. Here, similar to this push and pop, in assembly, load and store is there. If you want to, uh, if you want to store any element in the stack memory, then you have to use store instruction. If you want to delete or if you want to uh, delete any element from the stack memory and want to store the same element in the any other uh, processor register, then you have to use the load instruction. Okay, these two are the assembly instructions used in stack operation. Here, see the stack is traced using the stack pointer. It's very important. Stack pointer is one of the registers in ARM Cortex M4. Uh, it is nothing but R13. You know, uh, there are some general purpose registers from R02, R15. Uh, uh, in that, R13 is used for stack pointer. This stack pointer is used to trace the stack memory. Okay. And now see what are the main uh, what are the main uses of stack memory. The first one is the temporary storage storage of processor register value. Sometimes uh, there is a need to store the processor registers value. Whenever the new interrupt come then you have to store the status of the processor registers into the stack memory then the stack memory is used. And the next two uses is the temporary storage of local variables of a function. Whenever you jump from one function to another function, then you have to store the local variables of the first function in the stack memory. Then the, there also you have to uh, uh, you have to use the stack memory for storing that local variables. And this, 
fraud uses is during system exception or interrupt stack memory will be used to save the context okay of the currently executing code this context is related to the task scheduling whenever i will explain you about task scheduling then i will discuss more about this context okay see here actually our sram is looking like this okay i will explain how uh, the sram is partitioned into different areas first area is stack and second one is heap and third one is global data here see this is a sram of sram of cortex m4 processor here first one part is divided for global data global data and second part is for heap memory heap memory and third part is stack memory memory okay here this global data is used to store all the global variables in the program okay uh, what are the variables you declared at global space that variables stored in this memory location and what are the local variables you have written with static keyword what are the local variables you have written with static keywords that variables also stored in this global data memory space and here this heap memory space is used to store uh, the dynamically allocated memory you know uh, you use malloc calloc and realloc functions for creating the dynamic memory allocation if you create that uh, uh, dynamic memory allocation then that memory is allocated in this heap memory space and finally this stack memory this stack memory is uh, used to store the temporary data okay and the size of global data heap memory and stack memory in the stem is configurable based on the your, based on your linker script it is changed you can change the global data up to here also and you can minimize the heap and stack according to your requirements okay there is no fixed amount of global data space and heap memory space and stack memory space in a cortex m4 this memory space is variable you can change okay now see there are different stack operation modes in cortex not only cortex in general there are four types of stack operation modes first one is full descending mode second one is full ascending mode third one is empty descending fourth one is empty ascending here see what is full descending and full ascending here see the full ascending case in full ascending case if you want to insert any element in the stack then first you have to move the stack pointer to one position up one position up which is nothing but if you are uh, if your stack point is pointing 0 cross 200 zero, zero, then you have to move this uh, stack pointer to 0 cross 200 zero, zero, uh, i mean 201 you have to move the stack pointer to one position upwards then after moving the stack pointer you have to store the new data at that top okay that is nothing but full ascending now coming to full descending this is exactly opposite to full ascending if we want to store new element in the stack then first we have to decrement the stack pointer by one after decrementing uh, wherever the stack pointer is pointing in the memory space there you have to store the new um, element okay let's see suppose this is 0 cross 201 this memory location if you want to store anything then first you have to uh, move decrement this stack pointer then stack pointer will point uh, 2000 now at this place you have to store the new element now coming to empty ascending this empty ascending is nothing but first you have to store the element wherever the stack pointer is stored here here see the stack pointer is pointing this empty location initially the stack pointer is always uh, pointing the empty location in case of empty ascending uh, whenever you store the new element at the stack pointer location then you have to move the stack pointer to the to one position increment that means you have to increment the stack pointer after storing that new element okay now 
in empty descending case here also the stack pointer always points the empty space whenever you store a new element in this empty space you have to increment the stack pointer and then the stack pointer stores neck i mean and then the stack pointer points the next empty space in that memory location these are the uh, four different types of operations present in stack okay here see how the stack is placed in sram this is very important thing because in our sram the uh, in sram memory where we have to place the stack how to configure the stack in linked script here see mainly there are two ways to place a stack first one is here see the sram starts here i think the sram starts at this address 0 cross 2000 okay and sram starts at this address in cortex m4 x4 also you can configure the sram like this first at first you can store the global data and then you can store heap memory data and then you can store stack this is a one kind of stack placement first global data heap data and stack data and the boundaries between the stack and heap and heap and uh, global data are mentioned or are configured in linker script based on the linker script of your program these boundaries may vary okay now see here this is a second arrangement of stack here see at the starting of this is a starting point this is a starting point of uh, sram at the starting of sram both the data and heap memories are uh, located and from the ending of sram here see this is the end of the sram from the ending of sram the stack is started here one more thing remember in um, uh, in arm cortex m4 the stack is stack model is nothing but full descending full descending okay here the stack stores from the top to bottom that's why here observe the arrow marks are from top to bottom here in the second case the stack is located at uh, from last address okay from last address to some bytes that is specified in linker script this is about the stack placement in general we use this second case we store our stack uh, from the uh, last address of sram that's about stack memory in cortex m4 processor if you have any doubt you can ask me in comment section or i will give you my email id uh, telegram channel instagram channel in description you can contact me in my next video i'll explain you what are the different types of stack pointers that is msp and psp and i will show you one example code on stack memory that's about this lecture thank you thank you for watching this video